So we're back for more Pioneer. This day, it's the Insidious Roots Golgari deck. So first of all, let me say, at the time of recording this video, it is February 9th, and this is probably coming out way later than that. So the deck at the time of recording is brand new, and there's lots of different variations on it. In fact, it's so new that I couldn't even find more than like two deck lists of it. So I'm sort of just guessing and piecing this together based on what I've seen from other deck lists being piloted. So if you're seeing this, and it's, you know, a month later, and you're like, oh man, I can't believe he's playing this trash version of the deck. Well, it's because at the time, this deck is three days old. Anyways, what is this deck trying to do? So we're basically taking the old Cauldron Familiar Witch's Oven game plan, and we're stripping away Rakdos and not bothering with Mayhem Devil, and instead our payoff is going to be Insidious Roots. So... What does Insidious Roots do? It is a 2 mana enchantment. Creature tokens you control have tap, add 1 mana of any color, and whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard, you create a 0-1 plant, and then you put a plus 1 counter on each plant you control. So it's an army in a can, and the army also gets, plus, uh, also gets to add mana. So this combines with various things that are leaving your graveyard, such as the Cauldron Familiar, which if you have a Witch's Oven Cauldron Familiar means you're getting an extra plant every turn, and your plants are getting plussed permanently every turn. If you have Rubble Belt Maverick, which is ETB Surveil 2, and then you can pay to exile it from your graveyard to put a plus one counter on something, well, that also triggers the Insidious Roots. We've got Deathrite Shaman and Scooze and Agatha Soul Cauldron, all of which can exile creatures from graveyards, which means those all also trigger Insidious Roots. We've got Tyvar, which can mill and then return a creature from the graveyard to the battlefield, which again triggers the Insidious Roots. And we've got Oval Chase Daredevil, which... If we have a discard outlet, such as Lotlith Troll, we can discard it, and then when we put any artifact into play, oh, I don't know, such as the food from Witch's Oven, we can get it back into our hand, which, again, counts as leaving the graveyard, and we can trigger the Insidious Roots. So this whole deck is based around Insidious Roots, and I gotta tell you, as a person who's played against this deck and this card only a few times, this f card is fucking bonkers, and I can't believe it exists the way it does, and I think it actually needs to go on the ban list next to all the other bullshit. It's that insane. Anyways, what is the rest of the deck doing? So there's many different ways you can build the deck, obviously. This version, we've got Priest of Forgotten Gods to sack things, to uh, sack two other creatures, any number of target players each lose two life, sack a creature, you add double black draw card. Trail of Crumbs as another permanent thing that is able to filter, uh, gets foods, combos with the Cauldron Familiar, helps us find the other permanents in the deck. Lotless Troll, which if we've got an Oval Chase Daredevil, we can just keep discarding that over and over and over and make the troll gigantic. Tyvar hastes all of our creatures, which really matters when we're making plant tokens that can tap for mana. Agatha Soul Cauldron, which means the activated abilities of everything in our graveyard can also apply to any of our other creatures, including, oh, I don't know, these plants that are getting plus one counters on them. So if we exile Deathrite, if we exile Lotless Troll, if we exile Scooz, if we exile Priests of Forgotten Gods, we can get all of those activated abilities. And then lastly in the deck is Chalk Outline. So this is a four mon enchantment. Whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard, you create a two, two white and blue detective creature and you investigate, meaning you create a clue token. So this is an infinite combo with Oval Chase plus Lotlith Troll, I believe. So basically if you've got Discard Outlet plus Oval Chase Daredevil plus Chalk Outline, you go Lotlith, discard the Oval Chase, right? Well, you have to have a creature leave your graveyard. So you have to have like... Witch's Oven or something to, to get the combo going, right? Or you have to have a way to put an artifact into play. So let's say there's a, there's an Oval Chase Daredevil in your graveyard. There's a Lotless Troll and you've got a way to put an artifact into play, right? You trigger the Oval Chase Daredevil. It comes back to your hand. This triggers the Chalk Outline. Then with the Chalk Outline trigger on the stack, you discard Oval Chase Daredevil. The Chalk Outline ability resolves and puts a 2-2 and a clue into play. The clue entering triggers the Oval Chase Daredevil, which comes back to your hand, triggering the chalk outline. Again, you hold priority, you discard the Oval Chase Daredevil, etc. You get infinite clues and infinite 2-2s. So infinite creatures, which should be enough to generally kill your opponent. Uh, the reason that we're not all in on this is I have seen versions of the deck that are just like four chalk outlines, four Oval Chase Daredevils. It's kind of inconsistent. You're playing a four mana enchantment that doesn't do anything when it comes into play and you have no way of finding it really. And you have to like cut a bunch of these other cards in order to make this plan work. But I did want to include at least one copy so that we can potentially see this combo take off during the league. Anyway, aside from that, in our sideboard, 
we've got Necromentia. This is in here. Well, we, first of all, we have the Gigantha check, and Necromentia is the only card that discounts Gigantha. So let's talk about this. So Necromentia, this is in here for combo decks like Quintorius, uh, Lotus Field. The reason I'm not opting for something like a Damping Sphere instead is because those just don't work against Lotus Field. They just will find a Besage or an Odawara, bounce your Damping Sphere back to your hand, and then just win anyway. You really need a way to just straight up stop them from doing whatever it is that they're doing. And in a matchup like Lotus Field, I don't care about Gigantha. In a matchup like Quintorius, I don't care about Gigantha. Like, putting a Gigantha in my hand in that matchup is irrelevant. So I'm fine with unchecking Gigantha when we bring in Necromentia. Then there's Deep Cavern Bat. This this can either be Deep Cavern or Thoughtseize. It just needs to be a hand disruption card. The reason I've opted for Deep Cavern Bat is because it's a creature and therefore works with Tyvar and, like, all of the other creature leaving your graveyard synergies. But it's possible that the one mana matters. So it's either this or Thoughtseize. There's Fatal Push in here for creature removal is the matchups that that matters in. We've got a second Scoos for graveyards. And then Haywire Mites for artifact enchantment matchups, in specific in mirror matches. Because Insidious Roots is really like the card that matters in this matchup. So we need to be able to deal with that. It also matters for other things like this deck is very susceptible to temporary lockdown out of blue-white control. So we do need answers to that as well. Anyways, as I said, it's February 9th. This video is probably going up in March. So excuse this deck list for the time being. I'm sure it's been iterated upon very much since then. And there's, you know, the better, more agreed upon streamlined version of it. But for right now, this is what we're doing. And I think this basically gets across how the Insidious Roots plan works. So let's jump into our league. We're on the play for round one, reveal Gigantha. Okay, what do we got? This hand's acceptable. We can keep it. Obviously, I would prefer to have a one drop. I would prefer to have Insidious Roots in the hand, but we got Trail of Crumbs. We can dig for stuff. We're good. Opponent mulls the five. All right, so let's play Lair. Pass. Botanical Sanctum. Grazer. All right, so it's Lotus Field, so the Trail of Crumbs matters way more than anything else we could play. Ooh, we drew Insidious Roots. All right, well, we're playing that instead. Insidious Roots. Over to them. Then I guess we're just going to go Tyvar and Gamble that we hit it, because that's the only way we're going to kill them fast enough. Ooh, they didn't have Lotus Field this turn. They could have Growth Spiral, I guess. All right. Ooh, Witch's Oven. All right. Well, we're going to gamble on Tyvar. So Tyvar, Mill, do we hit? We did. Goose, trigger. All right. We make a food. This triggers. Plant. Then we get to tap this immediately because of Tyvar. This is so fucking stupid. Witch's Oven. And then uh, we've got nothing else to do, right? Yeah. I guess I can technically crack the food with the Goose, but I'm not going to do that. Over to them. I want to get it next turn off of the Trail of Crumbs. Like, I want to get value out of it. Hedge Maze. All right, so we're not losing because they just haven't found Lotus Field. Otherwise, we'd probably be extremely dead. They did put the card on top of their deck. Rubble Belt, Maverick. All right, so how much mana do I have? Do I want to play Besaidu? The only way that this possibly matters is it matters to hit Thespian Stage, and it matters to hit Omniscience, I guess, if it's already in play. Although, by that point, we're probably losing. Hmm. All right, so let's play Trail of Crumbs. Trigger... Then we're going to goose, eat the food to make a mana, trigger the trail, pay for the trail. I'm grabbing Hive or Takanuma. All right, let's grab Takanuma. I don't really have a way of triggering this right now. I guess I have Scoos, right? Okay, hang on. So I definitely need to get Scoos in play. So play Scoos, green, this one. All right, play Besaju, play Maverick, Surveil. Ooh, there's Cauldron Familiar. Put this into my graveyard, put this into my graveyard. Then Witch's Oven, sack this guy. Then get the cat. Actually, let's Tyvar, untap the plant. Get the cauldron familiar back, sack the food. Trigger this, pay the mana, use the trail. Ooh, another witch's oven. All right, grab that. Then the cauldron familiar resolves. We get another thing. We trigger the cauldron familiar. Then this plant has haste. So then we can tap this. Then we play the witch's oven. And then we're out of mana, right? Yeah, okay. So back over to them. Archdruid's charm to grab Lotus Field. Okay, uh-huh. Thespian Stage, pour over the pages. All right, well, we can't respond to any of this. So five mana, pour over the pages. Untaps Hedge Maze, Lotus Field. Discard Besaju, Growth Spiral. Puts another Lotus Field into play. All right, they've just conceded. I didn't think we had the win there, but sure. Okay, Necromentia and Deep Cavern Bat come in. Uh, what comes out? So, I mean, Scooz is not irrelevant. Priest is pretty irrelevant. Deathrite is not great. What else? I mean, Scooz really only matters to stopping Leer. Yeah, we can get rid of that. We can probably get rid of Soul Cauldron as well, but I, mm, yeah, hmm. Yeah, we can get rid of Soul Cauldron in this matchup. One more cut. How many creatures are we left with that Tyvar can hit? 15? No, the Bat is more. 
19. It's not a great hit, right? All right, we can cut one Tyvar. All right, no Gigantha this game. This hand is, I mean, we got some ramp and we've got Rubble Belt to fix two of our draws. All right, keep our Broil Grazer, puts the Hedge Maze, keeps the card. All right, let's play Goose, I think. Yeah, let's just play Goose. This lets us turn to a Necromancer if we happen to draw it. Third land, which is not Lotus Field, but it is Archdruid's Charm. Ooh, there's Necromancer. All right then, cast Necromancer. Black, this one, black. So they'll respond with Archdruid's Charm to put Lotus Field into play so that we can't name that. So now the question is, what do we name? I think I name Emergent Ultimatum. Without Emergent, it's much harder for them to actually get, like, assemble what they need to win. And naming their win condition is not good enough. All right, let's just name Emergent. Or do I just name Thespian Stage? Nah, because they can still just get up to Lotus Field. Let's just name Emergent. All right, their hand's another Archdruid's Charm and Fey of Wishes. They boarded out Emergent Ultimatum? You're kidding me. They boarded out Emergent Ultimatum. Okay, so the win conditions right now are... The one Fae of Wishes that's in their hand and Zakama, and obviously making a Lair of the Hydra gigantic. Where is that? Oh, do they just not have Lair of the Hydra? This is the weirdest version of Lotus Field I've seen so far. They don't have Omniscience in their deck either. I'm so lost. So they're just all in on Zakama. All right, well, that's that. Oh, we drew a forest. All right, Um. so Rubble Belt, trigger this. Well, Graveyard 2 lands. I guess I'm just making a food. So play Forest, go. Archdruid's Charm, finds Thespian Stage, Slight Earthquake IRL. All right, it passed. Temporary Lockdown. Well, doesn't matter if I make a food now. Yep, Temp Lockdown eats everything. They still, they have Fave Wishes in their hand, they're just not using it. Hmm. Cauldron Familiar. All right, so Urborg, Cauldron Familiar. I guess I could have just cast Oval Chase Daredevil. It seems so bad though. Goose, Thespian Stage, copies Lotus Field. All right, Hidden Strings untap their lands. Granted. All right, so what are they granted for? Oh, so they have the emergent in their sideboard. What are they even emergent for now, though? Okay, emergent. So Zakama is going to be... No, it's monocolor cards, right? So they can't even emergent for Zakama. Hit poor hidden Leer. All right, so I guess I just definitely don't give them Leer. So put Leer back. Pour over the pages, hidden strings. Yeah, make a bajillion mana. Like they could still hypothetically brick. They just happen to find Zakama in the top three. You gotta be kidding. Or they're just tapping the mana in case they hit it. Vizier cycle. No, they actually did hit it. Jesus. Okay. So they're playing mind games and I never know what to name with Necro now. I still think this is correct. I guess I need Haywire Might for Temp Lockdown. Like one of it. Um, I'll cut a cat. All right. This looks good to me. Keep. You think he'll board out the phase? Yeah, because now it's mind games. Because now it's like, what do you name? Do you name Emergent? What if you boarded them all out? Do you name Fey? Well, what if you boarded all the Emergents back in? I guess I probably just named something that I know for sure he didn't board out, like pour over the pages. Or maybe I just ab maybe just abandoned the necro plan all entirely. All right, shock this in, play Rubble Belt. Trigger, I want a third land. I don't want anything else. Well, the cat's definitely going to the graveyard. Given this hand, I guess Tyvar is also going to the graveyard. Hedge Maze. All right, so um, play this one. Play Root, Combat, Swing here. And next turn, I can start ovening and... Do that. And we're still just dead to temp. Maybe I just named temp lockdown because it's the card that blows us out the hardest. Sylvan scrying. Oh wait, no, I can just name Lotus Field. Never mind. Necro, black, black. Actually, I should attack first. No, I shouldn't. Necro, black, black. This one, Lotus Field. Take that, Lotus Field. All right, they, what they came? Moniform Hellkite. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX, blah, blah, blah. Okay, blah, blah, blah. All right, that one. They did not put Emergent back in their deck, so they've still got the one Fae of Wishes, they've still got Zakama, and then there's this thing. And they have Temp Lockdown in their hand and another Temp Lockdown. But without Lotus Field, they can't actually cast Lockdown, right? Like, they don't have access to any other colors. I'm pretty sure. All right. They make a zombie. We're not going to attack because we actually want to... Actually, I'm probably not blocking either, right? Because I want Witches Oven Fodder. Place Thespian Stage. Oh, no, their Thespian Stage can copy my land. I don't have any White Lands either, though. Yeah, so they're just the Lockdown's a dead card now. Each opponent sacks an enchantment. Sure. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, they have a zombie. They'll never beat us in combat. No blocks. Drew Lotless Troll. All right. Lotless. Play Oven. Combat. Swing here. All right. We won. All right. Round two. We are on the draw. Insidious Roots is in our hand. Best card in our deck by far. Always keep that. Ah, uh, blue-white control. Yeah. Okay. Marsh. Cat. Mm-hmm. Combat. Attack here. What am I even playing? I guess I'm going to play Priest. Oh, whoops. I meant to play Lair. Oh well, 
play priest. The fun police has arrived. Yeah, I feel like every, I feel like the format is kind of like, uh, yeah, sensor, sure. It's like, oh boy, another game. I get to play my cool new deck when I'm, oh, it's blue-white control. Combat, attack. All right, the turn to interact with them is on four. So let's just put Giganta in hand this turn. And then we'll play Roots next turn. Cycle sensor. Oh boy, I can't wait to try out this new Roots deck. I haven't played, oh, it's blue-white control. Okay, whatever I was planning on doing doesn't work now. Combat, swing. <sighs> okay, let's play. So the two doesn't matter anymore. Now it's three because no more lies. So I can play a tap land. All right, so let's play roots. Resolves, back to them. There's emperor, there goes cat. Again, I, let me just reiterate. If I didn't have an investment in this because I had to pay, you know, play points or ticks to play this league. If this, like if this was on arena, I would just scoop the instant I saw blue white control. I mean, I can hive attack. And then if they have a blocker, or not a blocker, if they have a removal spell, the hive dies. This is my best shot at killing it right now though. All right, animate hive, combat. Nope, they've got removal. Okay, any spell that resolves without my knowledge resolves without my permission. Get lost is the mistake, the monoleak is the cherry on top. I actually think the biggest problem is wandering emperor. Removal stapled onto, a, onto an army in a can. It's ridiculous. All right, play Gigantha. Sorry, yeah, instant speed removal stapled onto instant speed army in a can. Puts a counter on the samurai, sure. So animate one of these is death here. So map, rubble belt, put that in my graveyard. Three, I guess I die to a shark token, but I can't play around everything. Combat, attack the emperor. Yeah, it's gonna be a shark, right? Yep, cool. I don't even trade. Was I supposed to put another counter on this in case it was a shark to trade with both? Like there's a million things. What if they just had a removal spell and I'm just going all in on this for no, for no reason? All right, move this in front. So we're gonna kill the shark. This is sorcery speed, right? Yeah. Huh. <sighs> All right, let's play chalk outline. Lair, go. It would be fine if it didn't have flash, I think, but the instant speed is obnoxious. Yeah, it's a fairy and now we lose. Cool. Plus the fairy. Make another samurai. So now there's five toughness in play. So I have to pay like all my mana to make lair actually be able to get through them. And they still have enough mana because of Teferi's untapped to have restless anchorage become a thing. How much mana do I need to dump into this to attack and at least trade with two creatures? Four, five, four, activate rubble belt. It's not, a, is this a plant? It's a, not a plant, right? It's a hydra. Yeah, oh, I don't know. There's just no way I can do this in a way that gets through them regardless. Animate this, one, two, three, X is, uh, so three, three, four, if I, add, if I don't, if I map and I hit a land, then it doesn't work. Okay, so gotta pay everything. Shock this in. Rubble Belt over here, trigger Chalk Outline and Roots, then resolve this ability, attack to Fairy, and then they're just gonna trade, but whatever. Attack to Fairy. All right, they just have a Field of Ruin, don't they? I didn't even see that. I mean, what else was I supposed to do? They're drawing two cards a turn. They have all these blockers in play, which are all big, and Wandering Emperor keeps buffing them or spewing out more Samurais. Like, there's just nothing I can do. What is my only out? It's just go ham on the insidious roots and just try to get to the point where I'm just overloading the field and just hope they never draw a sweeper. That's not happening. Swing. All right, I'll double block a samurai. Oh, not the first strike one, this one. I'm playing badly now because I've just basically given up already. Like I could have, and I didn't need to F6 through my last turn. I could have map tokened and I didn't. It's just so demoralizing. It's like, oh, there's zero chance I can win this game now but it's not technically zero. They have a Shark Typhoon on top, fucking Christ. They actually get to hard cast the Shark Typhoon next turn and then we're just completely screwed. Well, I can lot lift the Oval Chase, but I can't keep getting it back. All right, pop a clue, which is Oven. Play lot lift. Doomwick has been conceding to blue white on site. Yeah, I don't have the money to do that. Discard Oval Chase, play Oven. Actually, I guess I haven't shocked this in yet. Gotta play around no more lies, right? Shock this in, play Oven. Veto, all right. Map patrol, top card is called and familiar, been that. Play Maverick. Oh, I guess this thing can tap for mana, so I didn't have to shock. Oh, I should have just discarded, what am I doing? Yeah, I'm just playing horribly because I've given up all hope. Surveil, oh, all right, well, put that in the graveyard. I want keep. I want to keep Tyvar. Uh, activate here, I guess, no, I should keep mana up to survive and trade with this, I guess. So back to them. Oh wait, no, I have detective for mana. So I, yeah, okay, hang on. This taps for anything, right? Yeah. So Maverick here, trigger everything. Actually, I just go infinite, right? At this point. So always yield to roots. So then chalk outline, trigger this. Always yes on this. It's like, it's gonna be a separate instance every time, right? So this comes back to my hand. Trigger, activate lot, let's troll. Oh, okay, stack these. 
Activate Lotless, discard the Daredevil, then resolve this. Then the Oval Chase comes back to my hand. Stack, Lotless, discard this. We'll just keep doing that until we've got a bajillion things. Get back, stack, discard. The insane thing is that like I can do this all I want and if they just untap and have a sweeper, it's for nothing. Hang on. All right, let's keep going. All right, I'm not exactly sure how many times I should be doing this. If they have lockdown, then it's irrelevant. If they have verdict, it's not irrelevant because I want a bunch of clues left over and I want Lotleth to be lethal on the attack. Let's get Lotleth to 30. All right, that's good enough. Then resolve all the plant things. Them not conceding does not bode well. I mean, they could just be wasting my time. Like it takes a long time to click through this combo, but yeah, it doesn't bode well. All right, then resolve this. Then uh, our only attack is the detective, right? So we just pass. Plus to fairy. Does regenerate tap your guy? I forget. It does, right? So it'll just die to wandering emperor, even if they have uh, just verdict. Verdict. All right. Regen. Verdict. Everything dies except troll. And then, yeah. Activate. Discard oval chase. All right. Well, we have a bunch of clues. And a rubble belt maverick. Fairy. Untaps the things. Tyvar. All right. Uh, so the troll's dead. So what can I Tyvar back? Nothing important. It's still technically monopositive because by me having a thing leave the graveyard, then the plants have haste. It's not monopositive, but it's not as bad as just playing it would suggest. So, all right, let's go Tyvar minus. All right, use the ability. What do we mill over? Oh, we got a lot with troll. All right, we can do it again. Troll triggers. <laughs> God damn it. Trigger, get this back. All right, we're going to do the whole thing again. Do we even have the time? Oh my God. All right, discard. Resolve this. Mm hmm. I'm probably not going to do it as many times this time because we just need to actually win the game and not run out of clock. And you can't auto yield to the chalk outline because you have to keep discarding every time in between the trigger. You also can't auto yes to the trigger because it counts the oval chase being in the graveyard as a new instance of oval chase. All right, I think I'm going to stop here because I'm just going to lose too much time if I don't stop. All right, bring it back. This resolves. Actually, I have so much mana from that. Is there any way I can win on the same turn? Because I'm going to have infinite mana with the token, so I just keep drawing. Is there a way for me to loop this in such a way that I just win on the spot? None of my creatures actually have haste, just Tyvar is giving them this ability, right? All right, let's clue. Why can I not? Oh yeah, resolve the clue. I mean, I have Cauldron Familiar to drain them, but I, can't, I don't think I can loop that. There's an oven. All right, let's just resolve all of this. Discard everything. Yeah, okay. Make a bajillion plants. Carpal Tunnel Syndrome dot deck. Yeah. All right, oven. For some reason, it's auto holding priority on every single thing that I play now because Moto's just great. Opponent cast Deluge, sure. Play oven, play, can I please cast this stuff? Yeah, all right. Thank you, deck. Thank you so much. Play this, trigger, play this land, play goose. All right, I'm just gonna F6 through the rest of this because I don't have any attacks that I can make and then, you know, this is irrelevant. Opponent cycles a shark. All right, it's their turn. Fairy plus, shark attacks, me, sure. I could have blocked this goose. All right, whatever. We're just losing too much time. Temporary lockdown. Brilliant. All right. Tap, 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 tap. Clue. Do I really have to manually click all the mana? Really? Why do I have to do that? It's all the same mana. Why can't I just pay it automatically? And you have to like spam click this because clicking it once isn't good enough. Oh my God. We could actually win this game if it wasn't for the moto clock. This clue. All right. Sack a guy. Always yield. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Called in familiar. Auto yield to this. No. Christ with the triggers. Auto yield to this. Can I please resolve this now? Oh my God. Yes. Resolve the abilities. Why are you forcing me to click through this bullshit? Resolve. Yield until end of turn. Sack the cat. Tap, tap, clue. All right. We're done. I can actually combo again next turn, but I just, you know, the temp lockdown. All right, Roots comes back. Please, why, why do you make me pay like this? Why? Stop auto holding priority. It just won't allow me to do it. It's going to just purposely waste my time with this bullshit. Troll, excuse, whoops, play this, tap something. I don't know. It doesn't matter. All right, just go to them. Even if we win this game, we're not going to have enough time to win the next game. Memory Deluge from the grave, sure. I would literally win this game if it was in real life and it wasn't taking us a million goddamn minutes to actually go through this combo. Yep, ult to fairy. Plays a land. Another fucking lockdown, of course. Mm-hmm. Yep. And this guy attacks, I guess, Tyvar or us. I don't know. Attacks Tyvar, sure. All right. 
play Roots. I think the thing I hate with Moto the most is that it, this auto hold priority bullshit that just comes out of nowhere for no reason. Rubble Belt, Trigger, Bin this, Bin this. Cat, Trail, Hallowed, Moonlight, sure. Fairy Trigger, Cauldron, Eat this, Trigger these again. And this comes back, then these trigger. Mm-hmm. And this eats chalk outline. And this resolves. Why is this not resolving? Why do I not have a plant token? Whatever. Play goose. Rubble belt here. All right, then it's over to them. We've got two minutes on the clock. Zero chance we can actually win this match. Draw for turn to fairy trigger. Targets the cat. Sure. It's another lockdown. All right. Okay, so I have to win as though I just have an insane curve. So anything that takes too long is irrelevant. So anything that's taking up too many triggers is irrelevant. So this, 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 this. Trail of Crumbs takes too many clicks to go through. So that's out. Cauldron's out. Uh, what else? Priest's pretty bad. All right, zero thinking. Zero thinking. Just got to play super fast. All right, keep. Play this. Play the cat. F6. Play this. Play troll. Attack with cat. Go to combat. Swing. Play this. Play Tyvar. Auto tapper sucks too. Minus. All right, get the goose back. Play oven. Temp lockdown. Yeah, psych this. Haywire might. Kill that. Always yield to this. All right, cauldron familiar. Pop the food. Trigger. Always yield. Oven. Sack. Cauldron familiar. Sack. Combat. Attack all. Play roots. <sighs> Opponent wandering emperors. I don't even have time to witch oven if it's exile something. Yeah, we just, we're not going to win in 20 seconds. Even if we win in 20 seconds, we're not winning the third game. So let's just, it doesn't matter. Round three, we're on the play. Yorion, fuck. All right, keep. Oh, hello, blue white control. Play this, play death right. Oh, and Dotha Triumph, is it not blue white? Thank God. Play lot with, and then attack with the trot, with the death. If it's in Dotha Triumph, it means it's a ley line binding deck, which means that the trolls regenerate is irrelevant. Sylvan carry it did. That's interesting. Play this. All right. Discard rubble belt. Discard rubble belt. Target here. Combat. Swing, swing. Free block on there. All right. Take five. Play priest. Up the beanstalk. <sighs> well, there's zero chance I'm sacking this lot with troll. So counter here. Combat. Attack. Block. Take seven. Play this. Play cauldron. Ill-timed explosion. Draw two, then you may discard. When you do, it deals X damage to each creature. X is the greatest mana value among cards discarded this way. So if I just kept mana open, I could have saved Lotleth. I was thinking that if they did have a sweeper, it's probably something that got around Lotleth. I wasn't expecting this. Oh, well, they didn't discard anything that big either. All right, we lose these dudes. All right, Soul Cauldron on the Priest. Then we put a counter here. Combat. Swing. They have to block. Let's just make sure we get more damage in. Exile the death right. Oh, I could have put Gigantha in my hand and also discarded that to put them to one. That's eh, fine. Gigantha. When discarding the land be lethal, you only get plus one counters if you discard creatures. Discard a creature, put a plus one counter on it. Five colors. BTL. Beanstalk trigger. Uh-huh. So Sunfall will do it. Extinction event will do it. Valky. That'll do it too. Uh-huh. They draw another card. Exile my guy. Yep. All right. Play Gigantha. Tap land. Go. Valky reveals Elish Norn and Oval Chase Daredevil. Plays Norn. Plays a tap land. All right, they're dead. Got him. Soul. Grab the Karyatid that's out of their graveyard. Put a counter on Gigantha. Untap. Gigantha is Deathrite Shaman, so exile this. We got it. Okay, versus them. So let's see. BTL. What do we want? Ugh, probably Deep Cavern Bat. Haywire is okay against Beanstalk, I guess. Scooze is probably bad. Like our card, it's not really that much to cut though. I guess one Haywire Might is fine just to have an answer to Beanstalks or whatever. What are four cards we can cut? I do want Priest, but I don't want it that much. So let's just keep one of those. It's also kind of hard to go all in on a troll against their deck because they've got sweepers. So let's play one fewer troll. And uh, if this combo isn't as relevant, then, one, then we can cut one of the Daredevils. All right, let's do that. Hand looks great, we're keeping. Hallowed Fountain Tap. All right, let's just play Familiar or Death Rite. Does it matter which one I play? I guess if they brought in Temp Lockdown, I would rather them Temp Lockdown Death Rite than Cauldron Familiar. So let's play Death Rite. Steam Vents, Shocked In. Huh. All right, Combat, Swing. Is this like counter or removal spell? I don't know. All right, let's play the Cauldron Familiar. I'll play Roots next turn or something or Tyvar next turn. No more Lies. Well, this one, Rubble Belt, Trigger. Um, in this hand, I don't want Witch's Oven, nor do I really want the second Tyvar, although I guess I want the second Tyvar if the first one eats it, but it's unlikely that that's going to happen. The Witch's Oven does matter, actually. All right, let's bin 
I sort of kind of want both of them. I'm probably playing Tyvar next turn. No, I'm probably playing Roots next turn. I don't know. Let's top both of them. Drowned Catacomb. So they're still missing green. Soul Search. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land. Exile it. If the card's mana is one or less, create a flying spirit. They took Tyvar. Well, now I'm glad I left Tyvar on top. All right. Um, Let's get Roots down and let's just hold Death Right open to eat their stuff. Roots. Combat. Swing here. Death Right does more damage eating stuff out of their graveyard than he does attacking. So let's just do that. Tap land. White and blue and blue. You're on to hand. Sure. Death Right, eat this thing. Okay, so let's go. I'm, I'm going to spend all my mana this turn, probably. It depends on what I hit with Tyvar. So let's just attack with both of them. So combat, swing. All right, Witch's Oven. Shock this in, play Tyvar. Let's sack this so we guaranteed have a thing to bring back. Mill, use the ability, grab back. Uh, I guess, I mean, if they lock down, they lock down. So, lot, let's troll. Trigger this thing. I mean, if they lock down, we're just so incredibly boned, right? So, yeah, whatever, we'll, we'll pass. Plays Karyatid. Lightning Helix. Okay, black, regen. All right, Rubble Belt here. This one, trigger this. Death Rite, eat the goose out of my yard. Trigger Roots again. Then Tyvar, untap Death Rite. Combat, attack here, here, and these are new. All right, so Gigantha, tap, tap. Tap. Let's see, I want to have the mana for regen shield and eating something, so let's just shock this and over to them. Tyvar plus roots is so disgusting that the plants get to tap for mana immediately. Tap land. Deadly cover up. Destroy all creatures. If evidence was as an additional cost, you may collect evidence six, which they did not do. Uh, then search it. Okay, so destroy all creatures. So exile a thing, regen, and I guess I may as well sack a guy if they're going to blow up anyway. So sack. Okay, so everything dies except Lotliff. Priest of Forgotten Gods. Hmm. I get to tap Gigantha immediately, which can pay for one mana. So it can't pay for Priest because I'm short. I guess I can untap it with Tyvar, right? Yeah. But then I don't have a regen shield up for Troll anymore if I do it that way. All right, so play Gigantha. Combat. Swing here. All right, well, I'm not going to minus, so just untap this. Honestly, probably just should have discarded Priest to get more damage in, but I don't know. Like, if they don't deal with the creatures, they're going to die anyway. So, Niv-Mizzet reveals this stuff. Did they completely brick on it? No, they, they revealed Necropsy. All right. So, they're dead. Yeah. I'll just show them the, the cat so that they can just concede. All right. It's round four and we're on the draw. Holy crap. Double Insidious Roots? Yeah. All right. Keep... It's Lotus Field again. All right. Let's see how fast we can try to kill them. Uh, if speed's relevant, then I guess Goose. We currently don't have a way to get rid of these Rubble Belt Mavericks is the thing. Temple of Mystery. A third Insidious Roots. Jesus. All right, Roots. And then I'm just not going to do anything else. Back to them. We really need, like, a lot with Troll so that we can start doing something here. Grazer. Lotus Field. Play Thespian Stage. All right. Play this. We're just going to double Roots. Play another Roots. Not, with, not that we can even do anything, but, I mean, this gives us the best shot at actually killing them. All right. They're not doing anything. All right. So playing these Mavericks is obviously bad if I just happen to draw Troll. So let's just play this and put Gigantha in our hand because we ain't doing anything else. Oh, wait, no, they surveil. Oh, I'm stupid. I completely forgot about that part. Yeah, I should absolutely be surveilling to try to put Cauldron Familiar or something in my graveyard or other copies of these guys. What in the world do they have at instant speed? Oh, yeah, copy, that's, copy Lotus Field. I think regardless, it's still too slow to beat them. Yeah, poor. Mm -hmm. Poor again. We're so dead. Vizier. They discarded Emergent. Okay, yeah, we're super dead. Omniscience, Emergent. I just want to see, is their kill condition Chandra? That's all I want to know. Yeah, it is Chandra. All right. Concede. If I had surveilled, what would I have hit? A bunch of irrelevant cards. All right. <sighs> so all of this stuff comes in. I guess Haywire was a one of. No, because yeah, they bring in Lockdown. So Scoo's out. Cauldron is in. Uh, Priest is a one of? Question mark. It's so difficult to know what I'm supposed to cut. Because I have a lot to bring in against them. Probably Trail... This only matters if I get relevant abilities into my graveyard to begin with. All right, trying to beat... I guess Deathrite can technically take them off of their loop sometimes, and it can stop Leer from doing stuff, so I should keep that in. Cut one troll and cut one cat, because the cats are too slow. All right, we only have one land. Rubble Belt can maybe find more. We need, really need to hit two lands, though. Yeah, let's mull this. All right, that's fine. Am I honestly putting Tyvar away? I want to hit land, 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 Necro. I can do it off Goose, though, I suppose. Yeah, let's just put a land back. All right, keep put back Urborg. Opponent molds to five. 
All right, shock this in, play the goose. So I don't know if they're gonna be on the same strat as uh, last time. So I guess I just necro hidden strings or pour over the pages. Oh wait, no, I just necro lotus field. What am I talking about? Yeah, obviously I just necro lotus field. Necro, lotus field. All right, take that, take this, take that. All right, what do I got? Chandra, niv Mizit, Parun. So they can still win this game. Lair, niv Mizit, Parun, Chandra, Lear. That's it. Uh, without Lotus Field, they can't actually cast Chandra and niv Mizit. So their only out is Lair of the Hydra. Oh, they have Skyclave that they also can't play. So Lair of the Hydra is their only out. All right. Actually, that's not even good enough. That's not going to beat our deck either. All right. They just didn't attack. All right, sure. Let's take, let's play Bat and take Vizier, I guess. Well, they'll just cycle it. I'll take something else, I guess. Question mark. I'll take Leer. All right. Deep Cavern Bat. Trigger. Chandra's in their hand. All right. I'll just take Vizier. Tax with the zombie. No blocks. Ooh, there's roots. All right, play Lotless Troll. Attack with the bat. So we're going to win. It's just going to take a long time. Zombie, no blocks. Another troll, you say. All right, discard troll. Discard goose. Combat. Swing here and here. I'm just going to make a food and then play Tyvar next turn. Plays beside you. Tax with the zombie. Mm -hmm. All right, make a food. Ooh, and a witch's oven. All right, combat. Swing here, swing here. Play Tyvar. Untap the troll. Back to them. Plays a tap land. Combat. Swing. Blocks there. Uh-huh. Nope. Doesn't block there. Sure. Play roots. Untap troll. Okay. Yeah. Kind of don't understand why I didn't just concede the moment that I took Lotus Field out of their deck, but whatever. I mean, this looks fine, I suppose. Yep. Let's run that. Well, we got Necro, but we don't have it fast enough, but we're keeping. Leyline of Sanctity doubles up so that I can't Necro them. <laughs> sure. Thespian stage. All right. Well, ooh, roots. All right. Shock this in. I guess let's play cat. Oh, the bat can't target them either, right? Okay, so they kept one land double ley lines. That does make some sense, I suppose. Um, all right, let's just play roots. Attack with the cat. Okay, troll beatdown is incoming. So shock this in, play the troll, play death right, and attack with the cat. And then we can discard deep bat and then eat it with death right to put a clock on them. A second thespian stage. Hmm. Discard the bat, eat this, trigger roots. At this point in the game. I don't know if it matters whether I have one of these lands or not. All right, let's play Beseju. Combat. Swing here. Well, they finally found Lotus Field. We're super dead to Temp Lockdown, aren't we? Oh, I shouldn't have played Beseju because for that exact reason. I was trying to think, like, is there a reason I shouldn't play this? Yep, that would be a reason. All right, Takanuma. All right, let's grab Tyvar. Combat. I guess I can technically play Tyvar right now, right? Yeah. So swing here, swing here. Play Tyvar, so black. Hang on. This is not a mono ability. Exile Thespian Stage, make black, make green, play Tyvar. I'm not going to bring something back right now, so I guess let's just untap this thing. Because we need to be able to rebuild in the face of a lockdown if they play it. Sylvan Scrying, Botanical, Blue Green, Hidden Strings, yep. Path of Peril, all right. Regen the Troll, minus Tyvar, use his ability, get back. Deathrite actually does a lot of damage, right? Yeah. Get death right back. Then this thing triggers. Combat. Attack with the troll. It's four damage right now. Well, it's two damage because I can't activate Tyvar again. So just pass. Skyclave Apparition. Target. The troll. Sure. All right. Death right. Exile. One of these. And then we can deal the final four. Eat that. And Tyvar untaps it. Then we eat the last one. All right. Lotus Field down. All right. It is round five and we're on the draw. We've got double Witch's Oven and Cauldron Familiar. All right. Let us keep Mountain. Oh, we're finally playing a red deck. All right, well, let's just play an oven before we do anything else. Play with fire targeting us. All right, burn versus double witches familiar. Let's go. They topped the card. Mutavault. And it's a special purdy one. Kari Zev. All right, unfortunately, we got to shock ourselves here, but, you know, kind of have to. All right, oven, cauldron familiar, trigger cat, three mana. Rampaging Ferocidon. All right, sack the cat, bring the cat back, trigger the cat. Am I blocking this Ragavan thing? One of the best possible cards they could have had against me here. I guess I'm gonna... God, what do I even do against this? I can't gain life anymore once this hits the field and it's damaging me. All right, let's just sack the cat, bring the cat back. All right, it hits the field. I mean, the Ragavan hurts them too, I suppose. I guess I just won't block for now. No blocks. So we go to 17, they're at 16. Or no, we're at 16 rather because of this thing. Oh boy, we didn't draw mana. That's a problem. So I go Goose, Death right, take two damage past the turn. Then what am I even doing? All right, Goose, this always resolves. Play Death right Shaman. 
All right, pass to them. Can't gain any life with Nissen in the field. I can still technically damage them, I suppose. Activate Mutavault. Swing, swing, swing. All right, we'll, du we'll dual block Mutavault. Ragavan, trigger, hits them. Block here, block here. Killing off death right, sure. Then the Ragavan goes away. Soul Scar Mage, pings them. Back to us. Oh boy, man. That Rampaging Frost Zone is just hurting us so much. I can play Scooze and then I can eat the Death Rite and I have a 3-3 that can actually block some of their stuff. That's really all I can do at this point. Yeah, all right, play Scooze. Over to them. I just gotta, tr I gotta trade with this Rampaging. All right, they're attacking with everything. Makes a Ragavan, that hurts them. All right, blocks, Scooze here, Goose here, and this over here. Just save as much damage as possible. It just will not stop at illegal. Oh, it's uh, menace. Uh, yeah, well, block here. I guess I don't technically have to eat anything if I just allow this to resolve damage first. Stomp on uh, this. And because Soul Scar Mage is in play, it doesn't even matter because it's permanently reduced. Well, I guess I just oven it then. Sack here. And then I guess I just sack. Yeah. And then all my guys get killed. And we still take three damage. And if I bring the cat back, it hurts us. They had the Rampaging Frost Zone to just perfectly counter what my deck does. So frustrating. I can't even like play creatures to block with because they every creature I play takes damage and all these guys have menace. Yeah, we're dead. I can play like one creature. I can get the cat back. Then I'm at two. I have to double block this. Everything else kills me. Yep. Awesome. Love cards that just completely shut down what you're doing. All right. Scooze. Fatal push. That'll be it. What am I cutting? Anything that's slow. What's slow? Priest. No, I need Priest to eat their guys. Trail is kind of slow, although the fact that it gains life is helpful, but it is pretty slow. Ugh. Let's cut that. Let's cut one of the Daredevils and let's cut... Death Rite's quite is kind of a little bit of a mana investment to actually do anything, so let's just cut that. All right. I also debated whether I should cut just Soul Cauldron, but I think I like having all of my creatures have the graveyard abilities. Also, it can instant speed grow stuff. I mean, sure. Yeah, that's fine. Keep Try to win just off of Lotleth Trolls and their regen shields. Play this, play Goose, Soul Scar. Oh, the regen shield doesn't even matter, right? Because it's in the form of minus one counters. How does regen how does regeneration work against this? Huh. Play troll. Over to them. Bone Crusher targeting here. So if I regen, what happens? This is just super dumb. So yeah, I can't regenerate it from this. So stupid. Alright. Yep, it dies. I still need to kill this so that the next lot with troll... I guess I could have, like, discarded both creatures. Hang on. Come on. Can the auto-tapper just tap correctly for once? So I could have pushed and just discarded two creatures. Yeah, I guess I should have done that. Ooh, Witch's Oven. Play Cauldron Familiar. I would have had to go double discard, fatal push the guy, and then Bone Crusher would just do two damage to it and it would have survived. Monastery Swift Spear. Unlicensed Hurst. Wonderful. They just have the perfect counter to everything I'm doing every single time. This is just insanity. All right, sack. Mm-hmm. I can instant speed get it out of the graveyard anyway, I guess. All right, no blocks. We're at 19. Get the cat back. Oh, right. It doesn't come back immediately. God damn it. I needed to respond to this being on the stack. Well, I'm just horribly playing this. Play Lotless. Shock this in. Go. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just doing this horribly. Oh, well. I don't think I was winning this game anyway. There are four cards ahead, including Bone Crusher Giant. And I've got nothing going on. Tack. All right. Block. Play with fire targeting the goose. All right. Sack the goose. Regen the troll. Okay. And these just bounce off each other. Kari Zev. Chalk outline, you say. Doesn't work because this hearse is in play. Although it does make it so that every time they remove a thing from the graveyard. But I can't play this without lowering my regen shield. Fuck. All right. Put Gigant in my hand. Back to them. Remove the things. Mm-hmm. Another land. <sighs> Tax with Kari and Monastery Swift Spear. Block Monastery. Attempt to regen. I guess I should have discarded first and then tried to regen, right? Because then it would have forced them to take action first. Well, it's a lightning strike anyway. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just playing this matchup atrociously. I'm just making one mistake after another. I could have sacked the Witch's Oven there too. Yeah, this is just... I'm just completely screwing this up. All right, Chalk Outline. Yeah, eat the lot with troll. So we're taking minimum four damage plus more if they activate den, but at least we can start cauldroning a little bit, but not with the hearse. Oh, they have another stomp. Awesome. The first game we had triple witch's oven with cauldron familiar and they had frosted on. And this game they have unlicensed hearse to counter any of our graveyard synergies. Yeah, den of the bugbear is active now. 
I guess they're just debating whether to animate Den versus play Bone Crusher. Yeah, just play Bone Crusher and then crew the hearse, and we take a ridiculous amount of damage. Five, six, eight, nine damage. We're at three. Insidious Roots. Play this. Play Cauldron Familiar. Trigger this. Sack it. Bring it back. Trigger both of these. All right. Well, we're at five, and I can't go. I can't take three damage. I also can't block Cauldron Familiar on anything because. No, I guess I can because I can eat this food in response to them activating Hearse. So I have three blocks here. I don't think they're in any combination that is that, that helpful. All right, plays the Bone Crusher, Cruise Hearse. So swing. Okay, so I have to chump block this and I probably need to trade. This is four. We go to one if they have any, well, if they have a Burn Spell, we lose anyway. So, you know, let's just double block Bone Crusher and this is two, three, four damage. All right, we're at one. All right, end of turn, Cauldron Familiar back on the food token. Trigger everything here. Two, these guys come back. Oh, that was end of combat. All right. Oh, they just had another land. All right, we have to gain life so that Ramanop runes doesn't kill us. Play land. And the only way I can do that is by sacking the cat to go to three. I guess I could play Gigantha and sack Gigantha, and then I'd have two food tokens, but then I can't... Well, I can sack one via the tokens, but I still have to block. Hmm. So option number one, play Gigantha, and then I can sack the, the cat or Gigantha. Gigantha is a really good blocker, though. All right, let's just play Gigantha, sack the cat, get the cat back. So we'll be at three and we have all of these blockers. So we have to fade a burn spell for one turn. Kumano, sure. So this thing triggers, we go to two. Oh, and then the Ramanop kills us. So if I hadn't played stupid and I had sacked my Lotleth troll earlier, I would have another food right now and I would be able to sack it to these two tokens. Mm-hmm, yep. All right, still a 3-2 record. Could have been a 4-1 record if I had not played horribly that last game. So obviously a bunch of tinkering could go on with this deck. I'm sure by the time that this is live on YouTube, there will be a more efficient version of the deck that's been like iterated on a bunch of times. So I think the main things that are up for consideration are, does the deck want to play Deathrite, Soul Cauldron, Scooz, Priest, Daredevil, and or Chalk Outline? And if it does want to play any of those cards, does it want to play them in more or fewer numbers than we have right now? And then obviously the sideboard might change as well. I think the things that are definitely in the deck are uh, Cat Combo, with, so Cat Oven, Rubble Belt Maverick, Goose, uh, Roots, Troll, Tyvar, maybe Trail of Crumbs is, is not supposed to be in the deck. I also didn't, I opted not to play Stitcher Supplier. That maybe is something that should be in this deck as well. So we'll see. Your media recommendation of the day is Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas. This is an animated adventure movie, sort of roughly loosely based around the Legends of Sinbad, I would say. It's a fantasy epic, epic fantasy ad action adventure. Uh, I would tell you the premise, but I think that's sort of spoilers. So it's just like fun, fun adventure movie, lots of great action, animation's fantastic, kid-friendly as well. Give it a go. And that'll do it for the Insidious Roots deck.